These headlines are disturbing, aren't they? Man due to appear in court for killing his wife. Man beats his wife to a pop. These are just some of the headlines that have continued to grab newspapers and news stations, not just in our country, but all around the world. The recent mortuary report has revealed that young men between the ages of 15 and 29 years old are the most likely of being murdered here in South Africa. Ever wondered why these acts of violence involving men are ever so common? Well, for some time, the voices of these men have gone unheard. Over the years, numerous studies have been done to try and understand the psyche of men. Now, here today to help us better understand masculinity and shed some light on why we continue to see more of these violence act, violent acts. Well, we are joined in studio by Professor Copano Ratelli, who's an expert on men. A very good morning to you, sir. An expert on men. I've never ever met an, ex an, a, an expert on men. Well, we, we do exist. Yeah. <laughs> we do exist. It's Here it's, and, and elsewhere in the world. It's very interesting. Unfortunately, we see so many of these terrible headlines as we do in, in, in our mainstream media. At, at times, I think that our streets are littered with things like untreated mental illness and, 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 and things sort of, sort of escalate from there. Is, is that part of our problem? I'm, I'm glad about it about what you just said. Well, the, th there's some data about that, that there's, uh, mental health does not get priority in our country. Um, so yes, some of, these, some of these gruesome acts, when, when somebody just murders someone so horrifically. Yeah, or I mean, children or even in some instances. Rape of children, yeah. or cutting somebody's uh, genitalia and, and, and shoving it into their mouths, that's, that's horrific. Yeah. Clearly somebody who, who cannot uh, be mentally a hundred percent or and or, empathize yes. with killing somebody like that uh, but clearly there's some there's some um, untreated uh, mental disorders there yeah so that's that's already one one priority that, that we seem to have uh, put uh, on the back burner yeah. because because of so many problems well, well, the, the other issue that I see and I look at a lot of statistics doing this job as you can understand and and some of the statistics are quite disturbing that I see it's a it's about fatherhood in a way is the thing that that bothers me the most you know uh, uh, and and everything's racialized in South Africa of course as you understand so the research would come in it says uh, white and Indian households the father is present more than 85 percent of the time right uh, which means that you know the the level of education within the family and the kids and so forth uh, they, they normally fare a little bit better in civil society in 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 black and and colored communities the father is present less than 40 percent of the time which and you see a lot more social ills within that. Is that part of the masculinity thing that we have to overcome as men to make sure that we are in our communities, that we are present as, as parents? Uh, uh, you're an expert on men too, really. I don't know what okay, I'm doing so here. Okay, so we don't need you then. <laughs> you don't need me. <laughs> and it's something Look, that we I think about a, every single there's day. A, there's a whole history to this. And, and, and the numbers you just, you just quoted, that mm. somehow Indian families are more intact in the sense of having... Uh, fathers in the family, yes. as opposed to colored and black families, well, Indian and white families, higher numbers, over 80%, mm -hmm. to close to 90% for Indian families. And then black and colored families, way down. I mean, the fact comes from a history, a history of migrancy, a history of, of fractured families, yeah. a history that was uh, uh, brought on A history on to of us, oppression, really. Of colonial it, it oppression. speaks about and, depression, and apartheid. Yes. And clearly, if you grow up in a family where you don't have a father present, you're, you're, steady, you're starting without a model. A model even to act against. I mean, yes. you see your father, so you have a, a living, absent father in the family. But there's also another problem, additional problem. If the father also has his own problems from a prior generation, yes. uh, uh, and is present, but emotionally absent, yes. you already have a problem there. So there's a, there's a host of inter, uh, overlapping and intersecting problems that young men have to deal with growing yeah. in such circumstances. And of course, it doesn't only end in the family, it goes to the community. Some communities are more intact, yeah. and, and clearly if you live in Constantia or in Sentin, as opposed to living in, in Polar Park or, yeah. or Togoza. Or wherever around wherever. the country. Yeah. So, you know, the thing that's very close to my heart, I believe the killing must stop. We must find a way to stop killing each other. How are we going to how are we going to stop the killing? Well, the report that, that, that you mentioned is, is uh, published in the WHO bulletin. Mm -hmm. Indicates that uh, the policies around guns uh, have helped. So that's the, that's the first thing. You have to demilitarize. You have to 
to, to have policies around taking guns out of people's hands. Because yeah. um, uh, it's come down, it, it used to be so high, but now you, you talk about just over 5,000, between 5,000 and 6,000 ki pe people killed with guns. But even then, you still have a, a whole lot of people killed with knives or blunt objects, yes. as you saw or, in that news. Or strangled or, or beaten strangled. to death. So clearly, the problem goes beyond guns. It goes to this fact of masculinities, of living in a violent country where men uh, grew up learning that, well, the only source of power that they have is their bodies, yes. and they use those bodies as weapons. Against other men, mostly. So the most grave violence is men against men. That's homicidal violence, but also other grave acts of violence. But of course, sexual violence happens on women's bodies. But yes. also, by the way, we don't have enough data, we don't have enough research on the kinds of sexual violence against men by other men. Uh, and I don't think it goes reported even. We've run out of time for this interview. I want to ask you on air because I want to hold you to it. I want you to come back uh, almost every month to, to talk about men and the issues that we have because I think the problem that our country faces is very much uh, a malevolent problem. I'd like that. Thanks. Thank you very much. Okay. There is Professor Copano Ratele. He's going to come back. He says now we're going to organize it. You're going to come back monthly to give us views about men because... Guys, we are struggling. All of us are struggling. Even the guys that you think are doing well, we're struggling. Even me, I'm struggling. I'm struggling to keep it together every day, you know? It's tough. It's, it's, and, 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 and in a way, it all comes back to our childhood and how we brought up. And, you know, therapy will teach you that at a thousand rand an hour. But anyhow, let's take a look at what you're talking about.